the, we will start with Amar, leveraging AI and remote sensing to empower small farms. Welcome, Amar. How are you? Okay. Hello. I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. And hello, everyone. And thank you for the community for this opportunity. Uh, so, yeah, I will try to share my screen now. Okay, I think it should be sharing now. Uh, so let me just go a bit. Yeah. Want to start the slideshow? Does the slideshow work as well? Yeah, great. Uh, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ammar. Uh, I'm a machine learning engineer and geospatialist specialist. Uh, we're, uh, our uh, project is uh, proposed by Enigma AI and we have another project in the in the another room. So yeah, we're excited for this set run. Uh, this project that I will be leading is named Satellite Insight for Sustainable Farming. Uh, in this project, our goal is to use uh, remote sensing data from satellites and machine learning to advocate and democratize uh, precision agriculture and in uh, as a result, uh, push for sustainable farming. So we can start with our mission statement for this project. So our mission is to democratize access to precision agriculture. Uh, how, would we do, how would we do that? That would be through AI and remote sensing data. So precision agriculture is uh, an interesting term in, uh, in farming and food production, which we will get to it later. Uh, but uh, access to it is limited and our mission is to make it as accessible and as affordable as possible. Uh, so first, let's just start by defining the problem. So the problem is kind of twofold. Uh, first, uh, uh, our project is mainly focused toward the small hoarder farmers. Uh, these are farmers with farms that are less than two hectares of area. Uh, and these farmers represent 90% of farmers worldwide, and the farms are 24% uh, of the farmland worldwide. Uh, however, these farmers, uh, as many as they are, they suffer from low productivity and low yields and lack of access to technology. Uh, that's kind of the problem and the reason there. So the low productivity and low, and low yields is because of the lack of access to technology. Uh, and the other fault of the problem is that uh, accessibility to technology. So on the right, you can see a figure known as the five A's of, of uh, technology accessibility. So it's availability, affordability, awareness, ability, and agency. Uh, this project will be focused on the two most outer uh, section of it, the availability and affordability. So our goal is to make technology in farming more available and more uh, affordable to smallholder farms. How would we do that? Well, uh, our solution is through, uh, as we said, precision agriculture. So a quick definition of precision agriculture is that uh, it encompasses the use of data and technology uh, to provide simpler and more efficient and productive uh, farming solutions to farmers worldwide. Uh, as you may guess, uh, smallholder farmers would be disadvantaged in this area as access to data and technology usually requires some form of data literacy and some high cost for that. Uh, so we work by addressing these two aspects of recent agriculture, data and technology. For data, we use satellite data instead of like drones and sensors which are more affordable as they can capture large amount of uh, large fields of area at uh, one time. And for the technology, we will employ uh, the machine learning and AI, which uh, in the recent years, their cost has been uh, going down. However, we will utilize the data we get from providing uh, the data solutions and the monitoring solution from our project. So how would our solution work? Uh, first, it will start with, uh, we'll try to keep our solution as simple as possible. 
it was a start with sign up, then monitoring services and, and uh, insights using AI. Uh, so when the user sign up, when a farmer sign up into our uh, dashboard, he should be faced with an interface that allows him to upload his data and the coordinate of its fields and any relevant data like uh, uh, the season it's grown, which type of crops, uh, irrigation frequency, all that of stuff. Uh, based on that, uh, we will offer free monitoring services, which doesn't require a lot of data or compute. And it can give the farmers historical context about how the how their projects uh, fields are developing and growing as time progress. Uh, finally, uh, the service that will be hosted on the Secure Internet Marketplace would be an AI-driven insights. So we will make use of the data collected uh, in the uh, onboarding area for the uh, onboarding uh, period for the farmers, and based on that, we will train uh, machine learning models for yield predi uh, yield prediction and crop classification. Uh, and finally, we can give you a little uh, overview of the team. So you already know me. I'm, I'm Ammar. Uh, with me and the team are also Mukhtar, who will be our DevOps engineer. Uh, responsible for the integration of uh, the dashboard with the Singularity Net API uh, for monetization and uh, all other DevOps uh, operations. And Mohammed Yahya will be our machine learning engineer, uh, responsible for the R&D on the models development, which will be kind of specific to each farmer's data. So we'll have like a base model and it will be tuned based on each farmer's data. Uh, I hope that wasn't too long. So thank you for giving me the chance to talk and I'd be happy to have any questions. Congratulations, Samar. Great presentation. I have a few questions. I know if anyone doesn't have another one, but please raise your hand if you have any question. But you mentioned that the farmers will submit to the platform uh, some information. Which kind of information they will submit? But for example, maybe there will be some farmers mm. that doesn't know some specifications that they will need or which kind of is this chemistry trail uh, specifications, the meters of the of the farm, which kind of information will be submitted? Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, the, the type of information and data provided by the farmers is crucial to our project. Since one of our goals is to make it accessible to farmers and to be accessible, it needs to be like simple enough so the onboarding can be like uh, understandable for uh, people with low digital literacy. So our idea is that we keep this staging into progresses, uh, into uh, steps, uh, sorry. So in the first part, uh, the only required data are just the coordinates of the farm. So whenever we have just coordinates like this uh, uh, latitude and longitude for this uh, rectangle here, we can, after that, uh, immediately start providing some sort of monitoring. Uh, it would not be calibrated since uh, these values here, uh, the interpretation of it different based on the, on the crop. Uh, whenever we have uh, extra data, uh, we could use it uh, to make the monitoring more uh, personalized. And after that, it could be used into the AI model. Yeah. So that was actually mentioned here, but I left it as an appendix just to save time. Uh, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Great. And I have another question is that you mentioned that you can include someone else well, first of all, I want to know a little bit more about the budget uh, expectancy of the time frame of work. How many months do you expect that this project will take of time? And you also mentioned that maybe you could include someone else to the team regarding the needs of the project itself. There is a budget yes. allocated for that specific thing in the proposal. Uh, not exactly. Uh, it's not uh, explicitly uh, outlined in the milestones, uh, but we expect we would need some help maybe in the dashboard development as we will want the dashboard to be as simple and 
uh, usable and friendly as much as possible. And if you see the team, we are all kind of engineers. Uh, so developing a good uh, <laughs> a good yes. interface would be a little bit tricky for us. So, and in Enigma AI, we do have, uh, we work on a project base. So maybe we could borrow some uh, front-end developers from other projects and we would uh, source the uh, font uh, internally. Uh, and for the expected timeline, uh, we already have like the part of the data pipeline built. Uh, we need to work on the integration mostly and on the R&D in the machine learning section. So, and the interface part and the dashboard. So we expect for like uh, the whole project would take three, to four months maximum. Uh, and yeah, depends based on how we can go and uh, each uh, milestone progress, how it goes. But we would be ready to ship some uh, MVP as soon as possible, like three months. And could you repeat me the each specialization of engineering that every one of the team has? Yes. Uh, so I'm um, would be responsible for the geospatial analysis of the data. So that would be in the monitoring uh, information as I worked in this field for about a year and a half. So that's how we use the information from satellite imagery to make it into like uh, indexes that, for example, the NDVI, how green the area is, how does that reflect back on the crop uh, and all and this kind of information. Uh, Mukhtar would be the DevOps engineer. So he worked on previous uh, defunding projects in uh, onboarding and in deploying our services onto AWS and dashboards. So he would be also responsible for all the heavy lifting in the backend. Uh, and we expect Mohamed Yehi to be responsible for the machine learning uh, part and the research and development regarding the specific uh, algorithms particularly for uh, yield prediction models. Perfect, Amar. Anyone has another question? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It's hand earlier, but... Oh, I had my hand up. I didn't know if we ran out of time though. Um, <laughs> Please go hi, ahead. Amar, um, my yeah. name is Megan. Um, uh, this sounds like an interesting project. Um, for a bit of context, I am living in Cameroon and we have a farm here. Um, I had a couple of questions. I wonder if you could go a little bit over more of the types of outputs you would be monitoring. Mm -hmm. That was uh, what I was trying to understand. Uh, okay. Uh, so the design of the dashboard is not yet finalized. Uh, but uh, the main uh, factors that we'll be monitoring are uh, indexes that reflect the growth of the field. So in this image here, it's shown what's known as the leaf area index. Uh, that's kind of a metric that measures the size of the leaf uh, based to the area. Anyway, it's an agricultural metric that kind of give you an idea of how far into the growth a specific uh, crop is. So would be monitoring uh, information about the field. Uh, we could also monitor uh, historical uh, historical information about the red. It doesn't cause monitoring, but it gives you a good context when you know how in, in maybe in the past five years, how often the land was grown versus how often was it left uh, empty. It affects uh, the use of uh, uh, water and nitrogen that in the soil. And finally, we would have some alerts for the weather and uh, a small widget for like wind and humidity and all that kind of stuff that related to farm to be all in one place. Okay. Um... Thank you. And then my other question, I think that you had mentioned you were only interested in farms less than two hectares. Did I hear yes. that correct? So I was curious, yes. why would that no. be? Uh, so our target audience is uh, small farmers. 
So and uh, this the definition kind of vary, but it uh, 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 some people define it as farms that uh, farm uh, owners that have areas less than two hectares. Uh, these people are the most uh, affected by the lack of access to technology as to implement uh, some kind of uh, IoT solutions would be cost ineffective as it would be high, high cost for a small area uh, for that that uh, regarding the mission. And regarding our solution itself, uh, if we want to provide some sort of free monitoring service, uh, if we kind of limit its area at first, uh, it would keep the cost for the story at minimum uh, until maybe we could have some revenue coming from the project, then we could relax this uh, requirement. Okay, well, your... thank you. Thanks yeah, for the question, thank Megan. Guillermo, yeah, one last you. question. Hey, uh, Amar, congratulations for the proposal. First, uh, yeah. hi everyone. So I have a, a, a small question uh, on regards of a uh, comment that Jan uh, put it on the platform mm. on regards of onboarding existing services uh, into, the, into your proposal. Uh, have you addressed this issue already? Uh, yes, so that was part of like our uh, early ideation phase. So okay. we were, yeah, we were wondering which part could be onboarded onto the Singularity Marketplace. And we came up with a plan that we keep the monitoring uh, dashboard free and kind of separate. And from the monitoring dashboard, whenever we have enough data and the user is familiar enough to access the AI insights, he could then from the dashboard could call the API that would be hosted on the Okay, and then later you, you, you should talk uh, with Kenrick. I don't know if you have, guys have met, but he has some mm -hmm. risk uh, mitigation tools, and some things that can be very useful. Uh, just thinking out loud how, how you can interact with the community with the tools that are already on development. Uh, but again, congratulations for, for the proposal. Mm -hmm. Okay, Great. that sounds nice. I will definitely look into that. Thank you. Thank you. And 